I understand that in addition to yesterday's video, we need to consider uh, roughing the outside of this component from a regular rectangular piece of stock material. So I'm assuming that we will start off with this as our raw material. Um, we would need to place uh, some clamps, probably in the same place as we did yesterday. So one on this left hand end and two on the right. This will then give us access to remove the material uh, along this edge and also along the top side here. We would need then to move the clamps in order to gain access to this end on the right hand side. So the first thing we need to do is uh, I need to patch the top of this uh, component so that uh, my cutter doesn't enter into any of the detailed area. Select the triangulated surfaces, select the underside surface and create a silhouette boundary. It's given us uh, a whole series of elements here of which I just need the outside profile. So select the outside profile, right mouse click, invert selection, right mouse click, delete. So this will just leave us with the silhouette boundary of the outside. If I then select my main surfaces, hold the control key down and select the silhouette boundary. And then from my geometry menu, create a planar patch. The top surface of this component is sat at Z0, so I need to enter a height of zero here. This has now combined my original triangulated surface list and created a planar patch so that they are one item. The next thing I need to do is to create a boundary in order to restrict my machining area. Create a new boundaries folder. A double left mouse click will start the definition of a boundary. So I just now need to trace the areas that I want to machine within. So I'm going to be machining inside of this area here. Select my triangulated surfaces, select the boundary, choose waterline machining. I'm going to select the 25 millimeter cutter that I used yesterday. And on the passes page, I'm going to apply a thickness here of half a millimeter. I want no thickness on Z. I only want to machine down to Z minus 64 millimeters. So that will leave one millimeter of stock on the bottom of this component. And if I divide uh, 64 by eight, I'll get eight passes. So we can see from that that uh, my machining boundary has uh, created the start and finish points. Right mouse click on the passes. Let's link them. I want to make a modification to how we lead on to the component. So I'm going to use simplified leads. So this is going to give us a lead on radius here around the component up to our end position where it will then take a circular lead arc off. We have our eight passes. Brief animation, you can see that it's not falling into any of those slots that we've got on the component because my top surface, my new top surface is protecting it. So that will take eight passes, leaving us half a millimeter of stock on. Next thing to do is to remove that half a millimeter of stock. So if I go to the waterline passes, right mouse click, 
and go to its properties, I can make an adjustment to that using all of the previous settings. I'm going to adjust my XY thickness now to zero. I'm going to adjust my step down to 32. So I'm now going to take two passes down this sidewall in order to remove the remaining half a millimeter of stock. Again, link the passes, leads page, choose a simplified leads. I would use the same process for this area at the top of the component. We would then need to reposition the end clamps and then thirdly, repeat the process again for this far end.